Hello. Um, hi, I'm Finn. I'm not a lawyer. Um, just to make that clear. Um, but uh, why I'm saying this will become apparent very soon. Uh, I'm uh, formerly heavily, now loosely affiliated with the Viennese hackerspace Metalab. Uh, I founded the Vienna chapter of Hacks Hackers a couple of years ago. Hacks Hackers is a group where journalists, hacks and hackers, hackers, talk about the uh, future of journalism and media. And I'm currently a data journalist at a local medium called The Standard. Um, what is data journalism? Um, it's usually pr pretty things. Um, just two examples of what people consider data journalism that, that I've done is I've scraped all the petitions of the, in the Austrian parliament and visualized them like the bigger the circle, the more supporters uh, the petitions had. Um, and I also researched if any of the petitions had made any difference, and the answer was no. So that was fun. Uh, there were like 740 in, oh, in April. Um, other, thing, other fun things with data, I've, I checked out. Um, under EU regulations, governments must um, make transparent all the, uh, all the subventions or grants for farms and I, I was the first one to visualize them and uh, do a bunch of research with it um, other than the whole, oh, this one company is getting more, more than all the others. Um, and every time I ask for data in Austria, uh, there are three questions, or two questions and one answer. Who are you? Why would you want to know? And usually, we can't give that to you because enter a silly reason here. Like, oh, there's a public servant's name in that data, so you can't have all the, any of the data, even though they could censor it, but no, they just don't give it out. Uh, so me and a few other people realized that that's kind of bad and founded a, um, campaign and an NGO to try to change that. Um, and today I'm talking about the right to access to information held by public bodies. It's also known as freedom of information. And according to the European Court of Human Rights, uh, right to access to information is actually a human right, uh, which is implied by freedom of expression. Uh, and the European Court of Human Rights is the last instance for human rights issues uh, in over 50 countries. Um, probably here too, I'm pretty sure. Oh, definitely here too. Because there's actually cases, Slovenia versus citizens, in front of the European Court of Human Rights. The first uh, FOI legislation was Sweden in 1766. They were, they were a monarchy then, and then were more transparent than most, de most democracies are now. Uh, the best known FOI legislation is the one in the US in, uh, that was enacted in 66 um, under Lyndon Johnson, not Nixon. Um, what is FOI? FOI is basically a law that tells citizens that they can ask for information and the default response must be that they get it. Uh, requests for information can only be denied in certain circumstances and with valid reasons. And if denied, citizens can sue or complain at the administration, administrational court, usually. Uh, what does that get us? Um, I just collected a couple of examples of what uh, journalists have done with freedom of information. Um, the most recent one was published yesterday, um, in which um, the Ferguson, uh, in Ferguson there were riots in the US, and um, police re released a video uh, of, the, of the person that was shot uh, stealing something, or allegedly the person allegedly stealing something from a store that had nothing to do with the shooting. 
and everyone asked like, why did you release that, that video? It makes no sense. And they claimed that they released it because everyone had asked for it. So some reporter actually asked for a list of people that had asked for the video, <laughs> and the list was empty. Um, so it makes it easy to prove that public officials lie. Want to talk about Snowden? Okay. Um, Freedom of Information requests re revealed um, that the uh, Foreign Intelligence Court, um, in front of the Foreign Intelligence Court, the NSA actually admitted breaking the Foreign Intelligence Court rules. Uh, and no one knew that before that was released or before Snowden uh, leaked all the things. Um, also, um, that one, um, in the UK there were requests, there's a list of thousand FYI stories only in 2006 and 7 and, and I picked some randomly. So in uh, the Iraq war there was a situation where there was no rescue mission for a division of the uh, of UK troops, uh, even though a rescue mission would have been entirely reasonable. Everyone said it's too dangerous. Um, FYI requests re revealed that private security costs at embassies or residences uh, or police training cost 150 uh, million pounds. Uh, Apparently, Beckham had something against the National Portrait Gallery using his picture. Um, apparently, embassies lose a lot of artworks um, and never investigate or sue anyone uh, or uh, tell the police that they lost it. Um, and apparently, computers increase waiting list times in hospitals. Uh, so, after a computer system was introduced, waiting times went up, not down. Sounds all very familiar. There's also some fun FOI stories. Uh, uh, the FBI, someone asked for pictures of a FBI retirement party. No idea how they knew that there was one. Uh, but they actually got these um, photocopied and censored, like the, the faces are blacked out, whited out. Uh, it's a, like a photo gallery of 100 black and white photos that are really weird. <laughs> Um, there's also a list of uh, FCC complaints about content on South Park. The FBI has a Twitter slang dictionary, that's hilarious. <laughs> and uh, apparently J. Edgar Hoover, who led the FBI for a couple of years, um, sent fan letters to athletes. And they are, since he sent them from his office and someone made copies there, you can ask for them and receive them under freedom of information in the US. And now you're asking, so what? That's journalism not hacking. Uh, yeah, but you can ask for government databases. Uh, still some journalism examples. The uh, ProPublica asked for Medicaid expenses, so like the um, healthcare safety net in the US, whatever you'd call it. Uh, they actually have a database of their expenses, so which doctors they pay for what. Uh, and you can check uh, if your doctor um, like prescribes really expensive medication for no reason, for example. Or just is an outlier in his, in his habits. Um, or if he's just doing normal things like most doctors. You can ask for shapefiles, so if you're an OpenStreetMap enthusiast and want to import like all the trees in Vienna into OpenStreetMap. That's been done. Um, apparently Mexico has given out some shapefiles uh, and if you can't find borders of municipalities and you have good FY legislation, I just suggest you just ask for it and f possibly fight it out. So what do you need to do for getting data or getting your hands on data? And yes, it hurts, you'll have to think like a public official. Uh, you have to ask yourself, what data does this person behind this desk need to do their job? What will that likely look like? And then ask for just that data. Uh, usually you can ask 
for inf any information pertaining to maybe the shooting in Ferguson and they'll have to give it to you. Um, now to the slide where I'm like, why am I telling you this? The RTI, the Right to Information Rating, uh, checks all the countries' legislations on freedom of information. Um, so they compare the, the actual law text, not the habits of public officials. And it turns out Serbia is, has the best FOI law in the world. Um, <laughs> Austria has the worst. I can definitely vouch for Austria being the worst. Um, Serbia, um, possibly more complicated. It's, um, it's both in the constitution, like everyone shall have the right to access, and there's a lot of free access to information of public importance. Um, it's been enacted, I think, in 2003 with some amendments that make it actually good. Uh, and uh, if we had some, Jaco and I had some interesting uh, discussions and went through the list of court cases. Um, and apparently if you, if you actually uh, complain in front of the administration or court, you're very likely to actually get the information. Um, but, of course, the culture needs years for change. Um, so, the more people ask, and the more court cases there are, the more likely that um, your culture or the pub public administration's culture changes. Austria is a different thing. We have a constitution. It's been enforced since the 1920s, and the Article 20, Paragraph 3 says, um, basically all public officials are uh, need to be um, need to treat information com as confidential. Paragraph 4 says, all public officials should be transparent. <laughs> Usually, <laughs> Paragraph 3 is um, beats Paragraph 4. And uh, that's just the constitution, the normal law says like um, we, uh, public officials don't need to give you information if you send ma malicious requests and there's court rulings that says you are acting malicious if you ask a public body for something even though you know asking is useless, hopeless or senseless. <laughs> <laughs> so basically if you've grown up in Austria and ask for something, it's either you're stupid and haven't learned, or it's malicious. <laughs> um, in more reasonable legislation, there are valid exceptions, like the interests that public officials must protect, or are allowed to protect by not giving you information. Uh, these are the same limits, usually, that are um, valid for restricting freedom of speech, uh, because uh, freedom of information is adapted or is um, an offshoot of freedom of expression. Um, and these are the uh, valid exceptions in, according to the European Convention of Human, right, Human Rights. And they are usually made more explicit, so more tight on a national level. Um, there's some that makes a lot of sense. Protection of health and morals is debatable. Um, so it turns out um, Serbia, for a FOI law, follows most of the best practices. You have a commissioner, that's his address. Um, so the first instance, if your request for information is denied, is not that you have to sue the government, but you can ask relatively informally a uh, commissioner, a public official that has two jobs. Uh, he's uh, responsible for like data protection issues and freedom of information issues and has to weigh the, the uh, importance of protecting public uh, private information with the public interest. 
um, with your interest of having information. Um, there are, of course, interesting interests worthy of protection, so like exceptions, but they are relative exceptions. There's a public interest test, which means basically is the public interest um, of the information not being disclosed greater than your interest of having the, public, the information disclosed. Um, and there's a harm test, at least there's court rulings that says um, public officials must do a harm test. What does that mean? Uh, they must, in their reply, if they think they need to withhold the information from you, actually state why a interest worthy of protection will be violated uh, if you get the information. They need to give you a reasonable explanation why it would endanger the public interest to give you the information. So that's fun. The EU is good too. Uh, they have all that kind of stuff. Um, and one, one thing that's a little better, I think, in Slovenia, at least that's, uh, I haven't found this provision in Serbia, is they have an information commissioner. Uh, they, the information commissioner can look at classified documents, and if they were classified wrongly, they, the information can just script, uh, remove the classification. Uh, the information can, commissioner can also go into the public uh, officials offices and search for the information if public public officials said we don't have that and they can actually if if they are denied entry to an office they can actually order the police to search public bodies offices so that's fun uh, in austria we only became active after we had the first example of a german speaking Freedom of Information Law that's actually up to standards. Um, that was in Hamburg, a state in Germany. Uh, they are building a huge um, building for the Philharmonic Orchestra and other things. And it was projected, it, it costs 500, it costs the state 521 million euro instead of the planned zero euro. Um, it has the costs have been climbing since 2008. In the, in the beginning it was stated that uh, it's a public-private partnership and the private partners take, uh, cover all the costs. Apparently not so. And so there was a campaign to actually release all of the contracts and documents regarding that and uh, they enacted a really good, uh, sadly local, not national law in Hamburg. So after, shortly after that, one of our uh, one journalist in Austria got a denial again, and we kind of over Twitter founded uh, that's four investigative journalists deciding to found our um, our campaign, and we have a team of journalists, campaigners, uh, lawyers, um, our ex public. Um, public advocate for against corruption um, and all kinds of people, data protection experts on the team and me somehow. Um, and we did things like uh, write to all the uh, people in parliament and ask them what do you think about that? Do you agree with us? Turns out like 90% of the parliamentarians that answered actually agree with us. That's good. Um, and we started the campaign in 2013, uh, in January we started it, in February uh, a state secretary agreed with us, in late February both coalition parties agree that they want FI, and uh, it was like, we'll have a new law before summer break. That's kind of the worst thing that could have happened, because um, the press was like, yay, we're getting freedom of information laws, uh, and uh, it was before an election. So there was a lot of, oh cool, the government actually does something positive for once. Uh, after February there was radio silence. We had rumors about drafts uh, being prepared by coalition parties all 
like there were weekly or bi-weekly articles about the legislation, but there was never a draft online. There was a medium release. We've almost agreed on everything and we'll definitely decide on this post before someone. Still no public drafts. And the day before summer break of Parliament, no law was introduced, no drafts were published. <laughs> So, we had to you know, apply, apply public pressure on both parties and after a long while we got both drafts and they were terrible and we had to write our own counter-proposal like if you've, ever, if you've never written a part of a constitution you should definitely do that, it's fun. <laughs> our opposition parties actually proposed our our a constitutional change in Parliament in October 2013 and it was, has never been discussed until now and not for lack of trying on part of the op opposition. Uh, at some point a new coalition was, draft was published, it was hardly better and it's still not been before Parliament one and a half years after everyone said yeah we'll have that before last summer. What do we actually want? Um, we want lots of reasonable things. We want a right to information. That's the bottom. Like, we want to actually be able to ask and have a right to answer. To an answer. At this point in Austria, public officials have the duty to answer questions, but we do not have a right to have questions answered. That complicates things a lot because we can actually never not complain or we can complain about not getting an answer but uh, a court can just say yeah you're right and still not force public officials to answer my request. Um, we want ac access to documents or at least copies of documents. We want a legal obligation for public bodies to actually publish information themselves up front um, so that you don't have to ask for all the information. It's like a legal right to open data instead of open data just being handouts from political actors who think, yeah, yeah, you can have this one data set, that's actually not interesting for anything. Um, we want a central website for disclosures that should be this, the site where public bodies actually publish the things. And we want a central FOI commissioner, same thing as you have, uh, so that we, if we get a rejection, don't ac actually have to sue the government, uh, at least not in the first instance. I'm one of the few people who actually uh, started suing the government after they did not give, uh, give me information. Like, uh, there was a Eurofight, an Austria bought Eurofighters, yeah, like, 12 years ago and 10 years ago they finalized things and there was a kickback deal. Uh, Eurofighter agreed to spend twice the amount Austria paid for the Eurofighters in Austria for Austrian companies. Like suppliers have to, uh, would have to get um, orders for twice the amount of um, the cost of the Eurofighters, that's kind of great because then you tax things and you get kickbacks and all's good. Um, I wanted to have a list of companies that actually profited from that. Um, never got that. Because, among other things, there were secrecy provisions in the contract. So I asked for the contract, for the secrecy provisions in the contract. Didn't get that. Um, that's my first two court cases. And this, the third one was, uh, there's a right-wing ball, like right-wing politicians meet once a year in Vienna in the uh, uh, Hofburg, the residence of the, uh, the Austrian president, and have a ball, a dance. And there's usually demonstrations against that because people don't want right-wing politicians to have uh, a dance in um, in the building that Hitler gave a speech from when he annexed Austria. That's kind of awkward. Um, and, uh, but everything's all right. Uh, this year, police decided to have blockades through half the city. 
there were more blockades, more no-go zones than when the President of the United States last visited Vienna. And I was like, why? There were, uh, in the last few years, there were no violent outbursts at the protests. The protests that, that were forbidden were always the most peaceful protests against that right-wing ball. Why did they do that? I asked for, all, for the doc documents they prepared in making that decision to blockade half of the city and like prevent it. There was another provision that prevented um, the first 10 districts of Vienna, everyone in the first 10 districts of Vienna, basically from having a scarf because they could mask themselves with a scarf through one of the coldest nights in the winter in Vienna. I uh, did not get the information I'm suing. So the average um, length of such a court uh, process is 18 months, so I'm still actually waiting on all of them. But writing the, the complaints was really fun, and I re can really co recommend that. Uh, what we're also doing is we don't only ask for information, we actually create tools for asking for information. Uh, there are F freedom of information portals all around the world. I'm not sure if there's one in Serbia, I couldn't find one. What a freedom of information portal is, is basically uh, something where you can select the public body you want to ask for things and then have a, basically an email field with the subject and the body and you can just write what you want and we'll put the legal blah blah that's required for it being a valid legal request, binding legal request in front on, and on the bottom of the body, and then send it. And it allows people to easily track the status of their requests, see the responses, publish the responses, and if, if public officials don't answer in the given time frame, we send reminders to people to actually poke the officials, so, hey, you're late, what's up? Um, th these, these kinds of things also allow us to see, since the responses are in the open, which public bodies respond well and which respond really badly. So you have quantitative data on how public bodies operate, and that's really good in applying pressure to public bodies, like, oh, the Ministry of Interior only answers 10% of our questions, and the Ministry of Agriculture, no idea, answers 90%. That's weird. We should fix that. And uh, that, that's usually a story that journalists are really respect, uh, responsive on publishing, because it's in their interest um, on journalism. So if you've researched a security breach, you've used journalistic methods. Uh, journalism is not hard. Um, especially the kind of journalism that's uh, related to FOI, where you can just basically explain what is interesting in the answers you're getting, why you asked for it, and what the problems were with, with getting the information. Um, journalism is a little harder than researching a security breach. Uh, I'm reasonably sure of that, because you ha actually have to fight for your data if your research is security breach. It's usually on your system and if you're logging things correctly you have all the data you need, hopefully. Um, journalism is harder um, and yes, that's a challenge. Um, you should try that sometime. Still, what does that have to do with hacking? Um, we hackers can make life easier for journalists and activists. We can run infrastructure like FOI portals. We can scrape parliamentary websites and make really terribly displayed, unstructured data structured and help people use that in, in activism, in journalism, in just interacting with, with each other or the government. And it's, it's fun stepping on institutions' toes. Um, everything I've said is kind of online, there's an RTI rating, uh, which is a comparison of FOI laws. Uh, Informationsfreiheit.at is my campaign and NGO. 
uh, fractions.at is RFI portal, which is based on the awesome code that's behind fractions.de, which uh, Stefan Wehrmeyer from Germany has open sourced. Um, it's actually really easy to set up, and if you're interested, I'm gonna help you do that right now. Uh, the Serbian commissioner is um, under that domain that I really can't pronounce. Just read it as it's written. <laughs> okay, just read it as it's written. <laughs> and uh, thanks for indulging me in my uh, rant. I'm Finn. Uh, I'm, I'm Finn Io. And it's, this is awesome. Like, I came here and someone gave me a SIM card, a local SIM card with data. So, questions? Actually, I would like to hear your opinion on this idea. You know how the law, when the law is made, it needs to take eight days, at least in Serbia, for the period before, uh, in between it is published and before it comes to uh, validity. Uh, that is so-called vacatio legis in, in, in Latin, and it is used for uh, the public to know what the law actually is. The idea I want to, to hear your reply to is, what about public contracts, all of them, no matter how the amount is high or zero or whatever, to be publicly available before they could come to a legality, to full legal uh, okay. yeah, effect, yes. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's also how I think it works in Slovenia, like contracts with the public government are not valid until they are, uh, they are published. That's contracts, not, um, not yeah, that expenses. Um, same thing in Hamburg, they need to be online for 30 days before they um, get, uh, before they are valid, except in very uh, tiny circumstances. If there's a catastrophe, you want your public officials to be like, yeah, you should fix that now. Um, but it's a really good idea. Um, also, like Georgia, publishes all the, all the expenses they have. They actually publish the, the internal um, um, bookkeeping, basically. So the more transparent, the better. Um, I am not, I'm not hopeful that this will happen in Austria anytime soon. But uh, I think FOI legislation is a start because then you can actually ask for it at least afterwards and find out where where public officials went wrong or spent too much on cars or paper clips. Yes, and uh, just for the brief moment, uh, our commissioner here in Serbia, his name is Rodolju Šabić and uh, my opinion, and I'm glad you share it, is that he is doing a good work. And, uh, I thank you for having this acknowledged by someone impartial. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I actually asked a couple of public officials for information. The problem is I asked in English, uh, so I didn't get a reply before this talk. I can't say if uh, they'll actually get it to me or not, but I'm also not a citizen and I don't speak the language. Um, I'm sure someone with lo local knowledge will be, they'll be more responsive to questions. And uh, for uh, appealing to the public commissioner, you would actually have to uh, write the appeal in Slovenian, not in English. Yeah, so. Our officials are not very good with English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's not a, um, uh, the language we use. That, that actually makes sense. I mean, I can't the really... The of the president. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to invite you to Holland uh, <laughs> to do the same talk, but about local circumstances. Sure. Um, I'm sure the people in Holland who are actually campaigning for this, like, there's a lot of campaigns for this. 
uh, on the European level and on local levels. And I can check, but if you want me, I'll come. No, uh, the EU Commissioner and the EU rules on transparency are only valid for EU institutions, mm -hmm. uh, not all the EU members, because the EU does not have um, <coughs> legislative standing to regulate like how um, a country's administration works. Um, they, the EU is very limited in what they can actually legislate, and it's usually what countries let them legislate. And internal administrational affairs are very close to the heart of our local politicians. Um, so, uh, do you see member countries of EU moving more towards something that would be a, a global state, or EU as a state, or they wish this, uh, or from my perspective, interregnum state of uh, some sort of uh, flimsy? <laughs> yeah, it's that's a really hard question, and I'm not sure what the future brings on that. Like we didn't, no, we didn't manage to have a EU constitution, so that speaks against uh, that ever happening. Which I'm not sure if it's a good thing or a bad thing. It's always uh, something that can always go good or bad. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Yes. Yeah, does it most can a country recognize whistleblower? Recognize? Whistleblower. Yeah. Um, we have a whistleblower protection uh, for, I think, public officials, but not, pri uh, not in private entities, as far as I can remember. Uh, on the other hand, there are like Austrian public bodies have some whistleblowing websites that whose security I won't comment on um, that are in the area of like financial issues, like if you see your boss committing financial fraud, you can actually give tips anon an anonymously to uh, the respective public bodies and other kinds of things. Um, and the Austrian public bodies are only now learning how to do the, how to treat this information privately, like. Um, because in the court case, you, you, uh, everyone involved, the, the person who gets sued, has the right to see all the documents, like uh, what is being brought against him and who actually, where the tips came from. And sometimes the names of the people who whistled, blew the whistle uh, actually appeared in these, in these documents, in these files, and that was bad. Still learning that. So don't tr don't trust the public officials to keep you um, anonymous. <laughs> but you're hackers, so whatever. <laughs> <laughs> More questions? Otherwise, I'll just let you out, and we're done early, so longer break. Thanks so much for the interesting discussion. Yeah.